Clifton, when you first started acting and booking roles, what was your vision for your acting career? Vision for my acting career, gosh. <clears throat> you know, I think when you're younger, I don't know, I, I don't know that we always know the real reasons why we get into a business. Um, sometimes it's in hindsight that you realize, oh, these were the steps that led me up to this. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I had one. I, I, I know I wanted to do roles that mattered and I wanted to represent communities of people that didn't have voices. I knew that going in, which is kind of interesting. Insight to have it as a young man. I was 17. When you grew up around the business, didn't you? Didn't your grandfather? I'm a, I'm a fourth generation entertainer. So my grandfather, my great grandfather, my great grandmother. So my grandfather was a contract player for John Wayne. Did a lot of the westerns. So when you told your family that you wanted to, you know, sort of be an entertainer, did they? say, well, you know, there's also a downside to it. Was it, were they always positive about it or were well, they my cautious? My grandfather was the only um, positive voice. He was the only, you can do it, that I got. Like, the, like my mother was not for my career. Um, many friends weren't, it's a tough business, you know, but um, my grandfather was like, no, you can do it. I know you can do it. And I just needed to hear, I just needed somebody to believe in me. And that was the, the one voice. Did you do a lot of imitations? Because you have such a, a chameleon-like style. You can be so many different people. Did you imitate a lot of people? I teachers? did. That's really intuitive <laughs> of you. That I, absolutely. I got in a lot of trouble in high school because of it. Yeah, I got laughs. I did. I, I Gosh, I mean, because Grandpa was, you know, you think of a movie like Real Bravo with Dean Martin and Walter Brennan and all these unique different voices. So it was, it was just fun to imitate. We, were, we started tap dancing when we were seven, so, you know, sometimes just to pass the time as a kid, I'd do voices. <laughs> Me and my cousin, you know, sometimes I mean, you hate it. When you're tap dancing at seven, you just don't like it. Today I love it. <laughs> what do you consider as your first success as an actor? First success, gosh, you know, I, I think, honestly, I think there's a, a danger in saying a, a first success because I think life's just a series of successes and failures. So even in this business, you know, success to me is is doing the job that I got to do in that room. You know, whether I get the role or not, but I, the fact that I, I'm able to pull off a performance and give a performance, because I like to give a performance when I audition, instead of auditioning, you know, I kind of like to do a lot of the prep work prior like some of the heavier prep work that most actors might reserve for after they get the gig. If I have the time, I'll, I'll delve deeply into it. Just that's part of the fun, you know, and if, if you want to do a good job. But in regards to making a living, um, gosh, you know, you're, you're, it's the struggle. You're juggling jobs, you're juggling regular jobs that let you go to auditions on top of auditioning. You know, so it's like there's a struggle in that and there's a success in that as well. So um, I'd say in regards to like benchmarks in my career, like, you know, your first gig that you get, you get to be SAG. You get your SAG card. Like, wow, I finally got my SAG card. Um, that was my first commercial. So that, that, was, that was fun. And then you look at a film like maybe 187, which was probably one of the greater challenges in my early career. Um, you know, there was so much to learn. The mentorship I got from Sam Jackson was just, you know, it kind of set the pace for me in a lot of different ways. And the ways that he acted and how he prepped even deeper and harder, longer. I was like, oh my God, and he goes, I gotta do this. So I wanna, I wanna be that good. I'm watching Sam doing his thing and it was just like, my God. So he, he set the bar pretty high for me, so that was fun. But, but that was, I think, my first really big role, and then to be challenged by somebody of Sam's caliber, and to rise up to that occasion, you know, that, that, was, uh, that was fun. And I know with a lot of things in this town, you can go to one level, and then you think, oh, it's just going to keep being like this upward staircase, mm. and you kind of sometimes realize you're back to square one. For sure. How do you... <laughs> 
uh, in, in any very, very endeavor. Very familiar with square one. Yes, <laughs> so am I. Yeah. So, um, how do you deal with that square one point? Because you, you know, just, it's, you it's just love it. You do. You mm -hmm. have to. You, you have to. Um, you got to love the process. If you love the process, then you're gonna, I think, be okay for the most part. Um, and the square, the square one thing, it's a. Uh, you know, you're constantly, and you know, it's, it's always a struggle, I think. You know, there's, there's just different forms, the challenges reinvent themselves, um, the obstacles, and you try, to, you try to develop the foresight to be able to see those things coming. But um, when I get back to f f square one, it's, it's, you know, you embrace it, and then you work diligently and extra hard to, you know, to get ahead, you know, in your craft and auditions or whatever it is that you're doing, writing, directing, so who's your character, Nathan, in Crooked Somebody? Uh, um, Nathan's, Nathan's a troubled soul who's been dealing with his past, and he's, as a result, he's struggling with atonement. He wants to atone, I don't think he just, he just doesn't know how. Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting question. <clears throat> Do you think people can change? Sorry to jump in, but no, I, please. Do you, do you think people really can change? I do. People can. I do believe that people can change, but I also. I, I mean, you got to go past square one. <laughs> you got to get knocked down and be humbled. You know, like truly, truly, your soul's got to be humbled, and I think only then will real change happen. You know, I don't think. Uh, it's just amazing in these times, as we look at our society, uh, you know, there's so many, I find it troubling that people have to get knocked down just to have any sense of empathy or compassion or, or you know, for others. It's like, why do you have to be down and out to care about people? You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> um, you know, Nathan's already down and out, and I think he probably is, been down and out for for quite some time so that that beats you down when you don't address an issue you know whether it's a physical ailment an emotional mental things like that um you know they're going to turn into something else that's not positive and you'll continue to grow and you continue to attempt to manage it as best as you can and survive so you know you don't ever really find out what nathan used to do but I, I try to reverse engineer so much stuff, and you know he still lives in a you know in a trailer, an abandoned area, you know, so he's you know, he's surviving barely. He might be protecting himself too. You know, could be. You, there's a there's a lot of different things that yeah, can happen. Yeah. But certainly, um, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to be able to demonstrate that darkness that's in all of us and it's up to us to, to act on it and I, I wanted to be able to show that he's still quite capable of being that bad person it's really about him being in control of his emotions um, and a desire to really change you know so I don't I don't know how I, I think you know we, we slide the scales of, of justice which isn't really justice when you slide them <laughs> Um, and you make excuses for certain things that you do. So you can look at the good that you do and say, oh, well, I've done these good things. I'm going to turn a blind eye to these bad things that I do occasionally. You know, and you're either bad or you're good. Yeah, and without giving away too much of the story, as, as Trevor was saying, these character arcs, you can also see what seems good. It, it's an interesting look at perception. For sure. We'll just keep Absolutely. it at that. But, and, and, you know, looking deeper at someone's intentions, you know, so, which is something we're exposed to every day on Twitter these mm -hmm. days without getting too, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. going too far into it, but yeah, so. How often would you say you're handed an acting role? <clears throat> like it offers? Yeah, where someone's just like, this is a role we know we want you to play versus you have to go in, you have to audition, you have to play the game, or just, you know, come back and someone sure. says, we know, we want. Well, not every offer, you don't want to do every offer that you get. Um, yeah, so uh, how often? 
it's kind of cyclical. I think it kind of depends what's out, what's popular. I've got so much work now behind me, there's no telling really who's seen what, you know? So, I mean, it, it, it goes in waves. You know, I think um, in the last few years, this is certainly one of them. But when I read this script, I was like, oh my God, I really want to play this role. Like, this would be amazing. So, I guess we found each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I loved working with Trevor and Rich, of course. And it was just great. The collaboration was really fantastic. So it was a good time. And these kind of indies especially. Um, you know, they were open to suggestions and ideas and based off of some of the research that I had done. Um, so, but to answer your question though, I, I, I probably get a offer, a couple offers a month, okay. you know. So is that what determines it for you? Because I felt with Nathan, you really owned this person. Mm -hmm. you, you inhabited this person's skin. Is that why you might turn something down? Is that you feel like, I don't know if I can own it, I don't know if I can respect it, or that's not <clears throat> Well, I definitely appreciate a challenge, a challenge um, as an artist, and I'd like to be challenged. I like to ch be challenged and do things that I haven't done before. So that's when I get to learn a new skill set, um, when I get to jump into another culture, another lifestyle. You know, um, there's only a handful of roles that I, I really won't play, like pedophiles. Um, when they called me about the lovely bones and I was like I heard about this book this is an amazing book from what I understand and said, yeah you gotta they want to meet with you to possibly play this role and I'm like it's about a pedophile well it's not really about a pedophile I'm like right it's about a little girl and the other guy's a pedophile well you don't really seem to be pedophiling things it doesn't matter I don't want to be the image of someone who says wow that's what I do or that's how I feel or you know I don't I, I just can't, I can't, I can't. The, the research on that is, is taxing on the soul. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm very anti that, <laughs> you know? So it's, uh, so I passed on it. <laughs> I passed on it. I said, hey, let Stanley Tucci get it and get a nomination. And that was before he was, name was even in the mix. <laughs> I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Stanley did do it and get a nomination. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd be ashamed personally. But that's just me, sure. you know. If you were to give someone a five-minute acting lesson, what would be like a couple things? Like a five-minute acting lesson? Um, gosh, I guess it depends on the material. You know, because you can't teach everything, you know, and you know, especially the stuff that you've learned in 30 years. So I'd, I'd rather give you what you need, you know, for this audition than... than um, things that you'll just carry throughout your career. You know, I mean, hopefully those little lessons will be some kind of creative anchor for you to, to keep in your back pocket, which is always sweet. And I, I ran into quite a few older, older, older than when I worked with them, kids, <laughs> um, that uh, reached out to me recently and, and thanked them for the, the acting lessons that I taught them and the, and the mentorship and stuff. So we know that being on set is not just acting, it's, it's navigating personalities and politics and hierarchies. How do you earn the respect of a fellow actor? Uh, do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Um, I'm, I, I, and, it, and it's funny because you go into certain projects, you know, with Annette Harris, like on um, Westworld, and in, in this film as well. Um, but I already won Ed's respect in this film, and in Westworld <laughs> I had not. So. You know, I called a few friends that had worked with him just to find out a little uh, background on him. And then um, I just studied really hard. I studied really hard to learn my lines. I studied hard to learn his lines, just in case. He was like, what's my line? Wow. You know, I had to be able to like, I think, I think you say, ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> maybe. Just, just, I don't know how, you never know how he's going to take it. Like, he's got to navigate. Sure. So I'm navigating. And, um, and then he goes, oh, thanks, partner. All right. So I did that, and then I slammed the scene where my daughter, my wife gets killed. And then he came running over to me and just 
pointing at me and filthing and frothing. And just like, yes, yes, yes. And then he freaking kicks me in my shin, like real hard. And he goes, that's how you do it. And then when he walked away, I was like, I hope that's going to leave a mark. That's what Ed Harris did to me because he did a good job. <laughs> it's pretty rad. It's cool. It's pretty awesome. So that's how I got his respect. But it, I'm sure there's different, yeah, like you said, you got to navigate. You got to navigate. Kind of Sam watch. Jackson, I was mm-hmm. dying to get his respect. Um, probably, you know, I mean, he's definitely a, a great mentor, you know, only second to my grandfather, you know. Um, but th- this man knows everybody's lines. He knows everybody's lines. He knows where the camera moved, on what line, and where he did what, and he knows everything. It's really amazing. So I, um, in rehearsals, <clears throat> in rehearsal, Samuel, uh, I know he was teaching me a lesson. We've had this conversation before, so. <laughs> He's got these giant monologues at the end of the film that are actually much bigger than what even ended up in the film. And in rehearsals, he, Kevin Reynolds was like, hey, hey you, ready to, you guys ready to, to do this scene? I'm like, yeah, man, let's, let's do it. And Sam looks up and he's like, yeah, man. And he throws the scenes on the floor. Sam threw them because he doesn't need them. <laughs> He's got the big speeches anyway. So I'm like holding my gun, and then he just like looks up at me. He got tears. He can control this side and this side too, by the way. He can make this cry right now. He can make this cry. He can hold them. I can't do that, but he can. <laughs> um, so when I saw him holding the tears, and he literally just put the pedal to the metal, and I thought, oh my god, I I don't know if I can ever be that good. So I I just remember uh, just racing home, racing home, and just de- uh, delving as deeply as I could just to get any ounce of respect from him. Yeah, he, he's a tough love kind of guy, so you gotta really, really, really earn it. Yeah. But sometimes those people are easier to trust, you know, especially in an industry where, you know, every, you know, you wanna be professional, but sometimes tough love people are actually easier to, to trust because you kind of know where they're coming from. Mm. Yeah, no, I, mean, I mean, I talk to him quite often. Nice. Yeah. I honestly didn't really know. I think this came, I lost my father to a suicide two days. I was at, at my father's funeral two days before the climax of the movie. And we shot the movie in sequence. So I was really emotional. It's, it's a rather suicidal type of scenario. And um, we'd done the rehearsal and they'd already asked me if they minded, if I would mind doing my coverage first instead of Samuel's first because I was obviously dealing with some heavy life issues. They all supported me tremendously and it was, I think it was then that I actually had the courage to even ask, uh, well, what's, what's Sam think about the work I'm doing anyway? <laughs> it's like, like, sure we can do coverage on me. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Is, that. is Sam cool with that? Is that what Sam wants? Because I'll do whatever Sam wants. And they, and they were like, yeah, he's totally fine with it. And that's when I asked them because Samuel himself didn't tell me. He was holding it close to the chest. It's really dope. <laughs> I mean, I love him. So it's interesting because when sometimes you're at a point where it's like certain things are going on, and if everything falls apart, it's okay. I, you know, we were having this conversation driving over here. As long as you, you know, and I'm I'm stealing your words, by the way. Sorry. Uh, you were saying something about staying true to yourself. So I think sometimes in those moments some amazing things can happen because you're at this point where you're not really about pleasing somebody, you're just kind of like doing what's right in the moment and mm. sometimes really amazing things can happen. That's right a good way to moment. live. I've been learning, you know, um, I think we can, as true as we think we're being to ourselves, we can always be a little truer, you know, seeking a, a depth of authenticity, if you will. You know, like, like I've just, I've just on this crazy journey lately through, through my work and the demands of trying to do better work um, has, has pushed me to, to lose sleep and study harder and faster and, and just go longer. And it's, um, it's just interesting because if you pay attention to the signs in those moments and do what's right and what speaks to your integrity, I can always rest well with whatever happens. You know, I'm not feeling bad. I'm feeling good about the decisions I make. And that's a good feeling. What movie made you want to be an actor? I can't, 
can't really say a movie. It was actually a, a series of, you know, it's, it's like you go to college and it's like right away they're like, oh, you got to select what you're going to do for the rest of your life. I'm like, at 18? I'm like, I can't even buy alcohol. And we want to make a life decision? I can't even, you know what I mean? It's like, so I, it was just such a weird thing. And I went to a college prep high school, so, you know, a lot of these guys were going to Ivy League colleges afterwards and things like that. And I figured out towards the end of high school that I didn't want to do that, that I wanted to be an actor. And during, during this moment of, like, wondering, you know, this lost, like, should I do it, shouldn't I do it? Um, I had a series of, I was teaching martial arts at the time to children, and um, I had a moment where I just had a series of adults and children all ask me if I was an actor or if I was, I reminded them of this actor or this character, all within like, like I, it seems like a six, six to eight week span. I'd have people with me, it'd be happening. It was happening like just so frequently, it was just really like, all right, maybe I should listen to the voices of these people that I don't know and become an actor. And I asked my grandfather, my mom wasn't into it. There's no way now, you're not gonna make it. I mean, she actually laughed at me, um, which sucks as a kid. You know, you turn to your parents as mentors and teachers and this and that, but that's a whole nother story. Grandpa said yes, so I'm grateful for that. And when he said, you can do it, that's all I needed to hear is from somebody I cared about that I knew cared about me telling me something like that. You know, because as you know, throughout your career, you're like, you have uh, hundreds of thousands of doubts, <laughs> even while working. You know, I, I spoke to Jack Lemmon on a film that I was doing, that he was doing, that I happened to be working with him. That's what really happened. <laughs> and then um, and I, I asked him, I said, I asked him about the, you know, I mean, he's a legend. I knew that then when I was in my 20s working with him. And I asked him about how he dealt with uh, the challenges back in his day. You know, Grandpa was a contract player, so he had work every week, whether he worked or not, he was getting paid. And he was like, oh my God, he was clipping. He goes, I thought every gig was my last gig. You know, it's Jack Lemon. I was like, you thought every gig, so I'm okay. I'm okay when I get really scared or I think I'm not gonna make it or you know, I got my bills paid for the most part. You know, I'm good. You know, I don't live in a mansion, but I don't want a mansion. I don't need a mansion, you know, to be happy. Problems of prosperity, they exist. Yeah. What do you want people to take from your character, Nathan? Um, I don't know. It's people being more open-minded to things, yeah, questioning things, um, being moved by the film in some way, shape, or form that makes them a better person, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's definitely entertaining, though. So It is, yeah. Uh, just be entertained. How's that? I think everything else will follow. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun one. Yeah, and there's an interesting ending. I don't want to... Yeah. There's a whole, there's yeah. a whole bunch. Of, I find so <laughs> many moments in that film so mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a fun one. I'm happy with this fun. I'm really, really happy. I'm, I'm a tough critic, especially my own stuff. I'd be the first to tell you to not see it. Let me put it that way. Okay. <laughs> I've had friends be like, hey, we're going to go watch them. We're going to support you. I'm like, no. You, don't, you go because you want to see the movie. You don't go to support me because I don't want to take the blame for this one. <laughs> You know, in this one, I'll take right. it. Yeah, there won't be any blame. This one's a good one. Excellent. Yeah, I love this one.